chapter 5. How many unique HNMR and CNMR signals exist for each compound? Okay, so I'm just going to write down each one. So this is A, B, I'll do the other two down here. Okay, so when you want to find out if uh, how many unique signals there are, basically you want to see if your protons or your carbons are in the same environment or not. So you want to look at their environment. and also their neighbors. So like whatever they're attached to, to see if it's the same or if it's a different uh, neighbor. Okay, so first for A, I'll do the HNMR signals in green. So you'll see that these two hydrogens are in the same environment and also these two hydrogens oops, are also in the same environment. So therefore this one gives off two HNMR. And then we can do the next one. So this hydrogen if you look at its neighbors, it's beside like a single proton and also beside um, another CH3. This CH3 is beside two CH3s. This one is beside a hydrogen up here. And then an another CH3 on that side. So you can see that these are all different environments. I'm just going to try to draw them in like different shapes. So therefore this gives off four HNMR signals. And for this one, uh, you'll see that again these two hydrogens are in the same environment. And then these two hydrogens are in the same. So this gives off two HNMR. And then for this one, all of them are equivalent with each other. So this only gives off one HNMR signal. Okay, so then we're going to do the same thing, but with our carbons. So here we have a carbon connected to two hydrogens, double bonded to another carbon. We have a carbon connected to two carbons 
well, two methyl groups and another carbon. And then these two carbons both are connected to a double bonded carbon and three hydrogens. So therefore this gives off three 13 CNMR signals. Okay, so we'll do the same thing for this. All of these carbons are different from each other. So there's going to be five CNMR for this one. Uh, these two carbons are the same. And then these two carbons are both connected to a proton and a methyl group. So th you'll only get two CNMR signals. And then for this one, these two carbons are the same, but they are different from the carbons that are in each methyl group. So you see two CNMR signals. So let's check our answer. So they got two and three for the one, four and five for compound B, two and two for compound C, and then one and two for compound D. So great answer. They also added like the actual values as well, so that was pretty cool. Its solution was correct. Thank <laughs> you.